So now let's look at the um, begin server and begin client programs. So here what we are going to do is we are going to have the um, client send um, a sequence of 10 big integers. Now by big integer what we mean is it's not a regular integer like we can write in numbers. So uh, it is <coughs> Uh, uh, an integer of the order of like say 32 bits means it can go up to 2 to the power 32 okay so you are working with uh, such a large value or such large values so there is a built-in class in Java called big integer and that's what we'll make use of okay so for example if you notice here uh, if I want to set a uh, uh, this is a class now big integer is a class so if i want to set an object uh, uh, whose value is negative one this is how i create that using a constructor okay so we are going to send objects across the channel so um let's see the uh, client which is now going to send something and of course i was waiting to receive okay so we generate a random number uh, generator which is what this piece of code does with the current system time being the seed and then you get the name of the machine and the port number at which the server is going to run and you're going to create the client socket so this is all uh, what you have seen before now the client is going to put something on the socket so we have to use the client socket which is the name of the object of class socket dot get output stream wrap it up with an object output stream constructor and that is what you get here so now uh, you need to really send those 10 integers right so what you do is <coughs> run a loop 10 times and each time you generate a random integer uh, um, random big integer and check whether it is probably a prime or not Okay, so you want a big integer that is not a prime. So you say you write object big int. Okay, that's the name of the object you created here. And when you say a write object, it's going to really go, uh, especially after you flush. So after you send all the 10 integers, you want to indicate that's the end of the uh, integer sequence that you're sending. So you send a negative one and also write that to the socket, to the object output stream. Okay and here we are not having anything else except the socket object so we say the client socket dot close right so now let's go to the server program so it was blocking um, here once an uh, incoming client request comes to server uh, an object of class socket is created and you say that socket dot get input stream you are basically getting ready to read something from the socket or get input from the socket. So you declare object object is null and then you initialize. So you want to check whether uh, the second uh, this object is also having all the um, uh, integer values that are used to indicate the previous one. Okay, so. Um, So you initialize this big integer as a negative integer uh, by putting like this negative one and then you run a while loop and you keep reading so this is what you do to read object okay from the socket and when you read things from the socket there is also a built-in class called object which is a super class of all objects in Java. So when you read from the socket, you read it as a big, uh, as an object of class object. So you want to typecast it to a big integer because you know that's how you wrote it to the socket. So you easily typecast and then you check whether uh, the value of big int uh, equals negative one. Because you know negative one is uh, being considered as the end of the transmission according to the client. So check whether it is negative one. 
and if so you break from the for loop or while loop otherwise keep just uh, incrementing big end and um, check if it is equal to the negative one next time or uh, after some increments okay so you close the socket as well as close the server socket because you don't have anything else to do in this program that's the only thing so now there is uh, again you include this big integer class so the project here um so you sent all these 10 integers from here right so let's see what is happening here all right um if it is not equal to negative one and then it's probably okay uh, you see if it's equal to negative one you break otherwise you just print the value so you could print all the 10 values okay so we'll stop here